Hey guys, what's up? It's Tara. So, I am so fucking happy to be sitting down and filming this Q&A right now. The past month of my life has been absolutely insane. You guys have probably been able to tell from my channel and my Instagram. I started last month by going basically on like a music festival tour, it feels like. I was at Ultra in Miami. I went to Phoenix Lights in Arizona. I went to Coachella Weekend 1. Then I was in Ireland for a little bit, visiting my dad and friends. So I have been a busy, busy girl. And I've also been working for Dolls Kill in between that. So I really wanted to sit down and just chill and talk to you guys because I love talking to you guys. I just wanted to sit down and chat with you all and answer your questions because it's so funny to like see what you guys ask. I don't know. So who is your fashion inspo? Okay, honestly, uh, I say this all the time, like I don't really know. I definitely inspire myself. I love Bella Hadid's style and I really like Madison Beer's style. I just love like the tomboy and girly vibe and like chains and dresses and skirts and then like tennis shoes. I'm just like very street, I guess. Also music actually inspires me. I'm very like a daydreamy type person. Like I listen to music all day, every day. And music like gives me visuals and like my outfits sometimes correlate with songs that I've listened to. That probably sounds weird, but that's truly sometimes I like listen to a song and when I'm listening to it, I like imagine me like with the music and then I imagine like my outfit with it. And sometimes that's how I come up with my outfits. It's really weird. What's the best part of being single? Just the freedom probably and not having any responsibility or feeling like I need to be texting somebody all the time or constantly talking to somebody. And the one reason why I'm not really trying to openly date anybody is because I can't give them the time and attention that they would deserve. Like I think that guys just need honestly so much attention. And because I'm really on this grind of like trying to get somewhere that I really want to be, I just know that I, I can't give them the time that they deserve and that's fair to them so obviously though if I met somebody and I really liked them and I wanted to make the time make the time there's always time for people that you like or love but yeah again not against relationships just not in one or seeking one but yeah have you ever had a festival and rave romance yeah <laughs> I've had like little festival boyfriends for like a day where you like meet a guy, he's like kind of cute and you like walk around, but I've never like taken a festival guy home with me or anything. I usually just like leave it at the rave, like see you never, that type of thing. But like it's fun in the moment and then I'm like, okay, peace out, like bye. <laughs> Since you go to music festivals and dress in fest clothing, do people assume you're slutty? I mean, probably. Um, I don't really give a fuck what anybody thinks about me. Like, I don't really think about that, but I think, I mean, I'm not oblivious. Like, if you saw me out and, like, and I'm in, like, this little strappy bodysuit, yeah, girls or guys that don't go to raves probably be like, oh, she's a slutty girl. Like, you know what I mean? But fuck them. Like, who cares? Wearing small outfits does not mean that you're a slut. That is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. So to answer your question, yeah, I'm sure people probably do think I'm slutty, but I'm actually not. Like, I don't know. I honestly don't even think slutty should be a term. Like, who gives a fuck? Like, yeah, I'm a slut. Dress how you want and don't care. People are going to be like, oh my god, she looks so slutty in that outfit. I mean, it's not everybody's forte or their taste and style, but like, whatever, you know? Like, anyone that's going to judge you like that just sucks. Anyways. Are you going to make merch? Mm. My best friend wants to start a YouTube channel but she's afraid. One advice for her. I got a lot of questions about starting a YouTube channel and like this is, I know this is what everybody says, but just do it. Just start posting videos and make videos that you like and just make videos that you're proud of. Like for me, I enjoy making videos. The actual like creating it and filming it and coming up with ideas for videos, I enjoy. When I started making videos, I didn't tell anybody about it in the beginning. Like my friends kind of started to find out after after I had already started because I was doing it for myself. When people start to find out about it, don't be embarrassed because it's honestly a hobby and it's a passion and it's something so creative. So be proud of it because a lot of people don't have the balls to do it. And yeah, when people did start to find out, like I'm sure people have talked shit about me. I actually got screenshots sent to me from a friend of this girl I was in high school with like talking shit about me and saying like what I'm doing is insignificant. And I was like, 
Mm, really, that's funny because if it's so insignificant, then why are you watching them and talking about it? Like, why are you even spending the time to look and talk shit and like look at what I'm doing? If what I'm doing is so insignificant, don't creep on me. Don't watch my videos. Don't talk shit about other people. And when you see someone that's grinding and working towards something that they obviously enjoy, don't talk shit. Like, what is the fucking point? Just do you. I don't have time for that. And it was funny because when I got those screenshots, I was just like okay like good for you because i love what i do and i know what i'm doing is significant and i don't care if anybody else doesn't see that i see the big picture i know what i want and i know what i'm working towards and like if some random person that i went to high school with a couple years ago doesn't see that then that is not the person that i want in my life and that's why they're not in my life irrelevant gold or silver jewelry silver i love silver i don't know i'm just not into gold right now yeah, silver is the wave at the moment. Silver and like white kind of jewelry. You ever gonna film a video on your opinion on drugs in festivals or otherwise? Okay, I got so many questions. I, I always get so many questions about drugs at festivals and I know a while ago I said I was gonna do a video on drugs at festivals and drugs in general. I still really want to do it. I was advised not to. It's just, it's just annoying to me because it's like drugs are so like prevalent and like relevant to the music and rape culture but everyone's like don't talk about it don't say anything like it's bad it's a bad look but that I think to me that is like a disservice to you guys because because people need to be educated on it hopefully I'll do something about it in a good light like in a really respectful and mature manner I feel really passionate about it which is how I know I should make a video about it but I just kind of need to figure out how. You, do you know what I mean? Anyways, yeah. What's your workout routine? Also, I love your videos. Thank you. Okay, I got a lot of questions about my workout routine and my diet and fitness and my fitness journey. And I know we are so long overdue for a fitness video on my channel. My current workout routine is mostly weights and cardio. Hand weights, um, I've been doing like two tens or twelves. And then at the end I run for like three or four miles. But I will make a video and my workouts change like on the day and how I'm feeling. Sometimes I do hit workouts if I'm really trying to like burn fat and things like that. But I've been really enjoying weights lately and weights transform your body it's honestly insane what was a typical high school tara outfit law love you okay love you too jesus my high school outfits oh they were like were not good no they weren't good i went to high school in washington state and <laughs> it just it was like leggings uggs windbreakers hoodies like it wasn't cute it was a time it was a time and i loved it and i loved my high school experience but like girl get your fucking shit together with those outfits you know what i mean if you could go back and do something over again what would it be to be honest i don't really believe in that I think everything in your life happens for a reason, good or bad, and the good and bad things, you just learn from them. So I wouldn't change anything because if I change some of the bad things that have happened to me in my life, I wouldn't be this Tara. Like, I wouldn't be this person that I am. I know it's really hard to go through the bad times, but it does shape you as a human. And if you took all the bad things out of your life, like, what would your life be? Like, I don't think you should go through life without any struggle. It just isn't natural. So nothing, I wouldn't change anything. How did you find your job at Dolls Gill and how do you manage working three jobs? Okay, so I got a lot, a lot of questions about me working at Dolls Kill, how I started working at Dolls Kill. So I'm just gonna break it down for you guys. I found my job at Dolls Kill because I went to art school in San Francisco. I love Dolls Kill, I knew they were based there. When I graduated, I finished summer school. I applied for a position that I was more than qualified for. I got the interview, I packed all my shit because I, I was in Washington at the time. And I was like, I got an interview at Dolls Kill, you guys. I'm packing up my stuff and I'm going because I am going to get this job. If I get this interview, like I will get the job. I just know I will. So I packed all of my stuff. I drove from Washington all the way to San Francisco and one day I went to the interview, killed it, got hired the same day. 
and worked my ass off. I would come early to work every day, stay to the end, knew everybody in my department, was really nice to everybody. I had a really good relationship with my manager, Alexis, who is my fairy godmother because she like saw my potential and like pushed me to start working in the influencer marketing position. And then my new manager, Donna, like brought me on and she's amazing, I've learned a lot from her. Then through her, I met Paul, who's the creative director of Dolls Kill, who gave me the opportunity to start creating content for Dolls Kill. The CEO of Dolls Kill like found my YouTube videos and then everyone basically just started talking and like the more I was trying and the more I was actively working, the more people saw my passion. And that's basically how I got the job that I have now. And it is a crazy, crazy experience. Like I can't believe it's happened in this short amount of time. Like I haven't even been working for Dolls Kill for a year. The good thing about working for a small company is that they give you opportunities that you wouldn't get for a really big company. Basically that's how I started working at Dolls Kill and that's how I got into this position. And how do you manage working three jobs? I don't know, I just like thrive off of being busy. I definitely don't have a lot of time to myself. But I know that in everything that I'm doing, it's benefiting me in some way. Drunkest you've ever been. Okay, I have such a funny story to tell you guys. It's It should be embarrassing, but I think it's so funny. Like I just tell people this story and it's so funny. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you guys about my first trip to Vegas. Of course it's a Vegas story. Basically, I went to Vegas with my two friends, Brie and Lex. We were at the end of our trip. We decided to pull an all-nighter for like the day before, and our flight was at 6 a.m. to leave on that Monday. We had to be at the airport at like 4 a.m., whatever. We stayed up for like over 24 hours. It was close to 30 hours. Belligerently drunk, we all were. We were like so trashed. Right before I fell asleep, we got room service and I ate some fries and I had all this food and I just passed out, didn't eat any of it. And you know that kind of hungover where you wake up and you feel fine and then it hits you like 15 minutes later? That's what happened. And it was so aggressive. I was like, oh my God, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. But I didn't throw up, but I knew I was going to have to throw up. So we get in our Uber. We're running late to go to the airport. And my friend Lex is sitting in the front of the Uber. I'm sitting right behind her. My friend Bree is here. And then the Uber driver's in the front. We're driving. And I'm like, I don't feel good, guys. You guys, I do not feel good. I'm going to have to throw up. And because I was still like kind of drunk, I was like, yeah, I'm going to throw up. And I opened the car door when we were on the freeway. I had my seatbelt on. But my, I think what was happening in my mind is that I was going to like puke out of the door. And so I opened the door and the Uber driver was like, what the fuck are you doing? And my friend Lex was like in the front. And she goes, Tara, close the door. What are you doing? And so I close it. And instead of rolling down the window, I just go like that. And I cover my mouth like and so this is so disgusting I was like I'm gonna throw up and everyone's kind of like just being quiet and I'm like this and then I kid you not you guys I throw up in my mouth and I'm like holding it in with my hands so I didn't have a hand to like put the window down and then my friend Lex turns around and she like turns around the seat and goes are you okay and more comes up and I just go because <laughs> I couldn't hold it in anymore and I projectile vomit on my friend Lex's face and hair like all over her and it just came like it was like the exorcist like a demon coming out of my mouth it was like fully horizontal like the force behind it was insane my friend Lex it just hits her all over the face it was mostly liquid but there was like some fries and she's like oh my god oh my god oh my god you just puked on my face and the uber driver turns around and goes oh shit and I lean back and I'm like, oh, I feel so much better. And Lex is just covered in my vomit, like straight up puke. That's basically my first Vegas experience. It's my worst drunk story, but also like the best one. Like how often can you say you projectile vomited all over your friend's face? Like, I don't think many people can say that. Sorry, Lex, by the way, if you're watching this, my bad. But... <laughs> And then I had to pay like an $80 Uber cleaning fee because I threw up in the Uber. But like, Vegas, am I right? Okay, how did you find your direction in life? From Jordan Bateman, who I actually know 
my direction in life definitely started slowly. After high school, I had no clue what I wanted to do. You're just never going to know your direction in life until you start working towards your passions and going through the life obstacles, really seeing what's out there. Obviously, I still don't really know what I'm doing. Like, I'm just going through the motions and I'm working hard and I know it's gonna bring me to a great place because I just have like that faith in myself. And I just know that like my direction in life is such a reflection of me, who I personally am. And that's why I feel like it's so important just to be yourself and like never try to like form or like try to be like anybody else because it's just not worth it. But I hope that kind of, I feel like I didn't answer that very well, but. Last question is from my Tia. She's basically like my aunt. She's my mom's best friend. And she goes, how has your mom influenced your incredible journey? Um, oh my God. I just like got super choked up. My mom, oh my God. Sorry. My mom's amazing. She's like the strongest woman I think I've ever witnessed in my life. Um, she's taught me like the deepest loyalty. She's just been through so much. And I've, she's always, like, even though she was going through, like, really hard times, she was always just trying to make sure that me and my siblings were taken care of. And, like, she's the best mom. Like, she's had to, like, deal with shit that no woman should ever deal with and, like, has been so loyal to people that don't deserve her. And it, she's honestly so inspiring. And she has never told me or any of my siblings that we had to go to college, that we had to do this. She never told us who we had to be. She always just let us find our own way. She's raised like really successful kids, I think, and like really determined kids. And she's an amazing mom and I'm so lucky to have her. And I cannot believe I'm getting like so emotional. I fucking love my mom. She's one of my best friends. But yeah, I love you, mom. Okay, so sorry about the emotional ending, but that is it for this Q&A. I hope you guys enjoyed. And let me know if you want me to do more Q&As. Fitness videos are coming. Fashion videos are coming. So many cool things are gonna be happening. The summer is gonna be good. And I'm really excited for the rest of the year and all the things that we're gonna be doing um, together or like me, you guys watching me. And I love you guys. And, oh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. My at is Tara0Neal. And I'll be posting a lot more on there. I've been a little MIA. It's okay, though. Anyways, yes, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.